This West Elm dresser cost over $2,000, but I'm gonna show you how I recreated it at just a fraction of the cost. West Elm is a high-end furniture store that has some beautiful furniture and decor pieces that come at a really high price point. When I saw this dresser on their website, I fell in love with it. I love the modern clean lines and shape and the wood carving on the front drawers really give it this organic look. However, at over 2,300 Canadian dollars, the dresser is definitely on the high side. I know I could recreate this look with a vintage used dresser that I purchased off Facebook Marketplace and some other simple materials. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how I recreate this high end West Elm dresser at just a fraction of the cost. Let's go. This is the dresser I've chosen for my West Elm recreation. It's not the exact same size and shape as the dresser at West Elm, but I think it's close enough and will definitely work for, what, for the look that I'm going for. It's a vintage mid-century modern dresser that I purchased off Facebook Marketplace for $30. It's in really great shape and the worst thing about it is the faux wood plastic coating that covers everything and those hexagon panels on the front drawers will definitely have to go in order for me to recreate the dresser that is at West Elm. The first part of any makeover is cleaning. As I was removing the drawers from the dresser, one of the drawers just gave me a really hard time. No matter how much I yanked or pulled, it would not come out. It took me a good five minutes of gentle prodding and yanking of the drawer in order to finally get it to come out. And that's when I saw that the rail at the top of the drawer had actually come misaligned. And so that was causing the drawer to stick. So I was able to fix that pretty easily by pulling the rail back into place and uh, adhering it with some wood glue. I used Zeb cleaner to scrub down the entire dresser, remove any dirt and grime, and then wiped all of that soapy residue off with some clean water. The inside of these drawers had this weird plastic lining um, on the inside. It was almost like a really thin saran wrap that was glued inside. I'm not sure um, what it was, but I did my best to sand out as much as I could. And then I knew I would be putting drawer liners inside these so they would look fine. Since I needed all the drawer fronts to be flat and uh, all aligned with each other, these hexagon wood panels on the front of two of the drawers had to go. Well, there is a screw holding this thing in that I don't know why I didn't think of. No, baby, I can't turn it. It's like you need to do this first. So, for those of you who watch my videos, it's my husband that does the taping. And he is taping me and laughing as I struggle to take the damn screw out. 
And so we can do a little role reversal now. And my husband is going to unscrew this and I'm gonna hold the camera. And lastly, while this piece was in really good shape, there were a few scratches and dings on the body that I easily uh, was able to fix with a little bit of Bondo. I had to add something to the drawer fronts to recreate the look of the wood carved detail that exists on the front of the West Elm dresser. So for this, I've decided to use pole wrap. Now I've done another video uh, where I used pole wrap before. I'll link to it somewhere here. And I love, love, love using pole wrap because it just, it creates that fluted look. However, in the previous video, I used the MDF pole wrap. Um, and that was fine to use because I was painting over it. And so no one was really gonna see what the material was made of. However, for this dresser, I needed it to be wood or look like wood. So fortunately, pole wrap actually comes in a few different materials. Um, and for this dresser, I chose the oak version of pole wrap. So you can actually see the oak grain on the pole wrap and this would give me that wood look or that wood carved look that exists on the front of the West Elm dresser. Adding pole wrap to your furniture makeovers is actually really easy. I do use a miter saw to cut down the height of the pull wrap to what I need. You could use a just a regular saw, you probably just wouldn't get a nice clean cut, but pull wrap is also very easy to sand, so you could always sand that down smooth. And then to cut the length, I just use a blade because the back of the pull wrap is just, it's made of cardboard really, so really easy to cut with a blade. To attach it to the drawer fronts, I use construction adhesive. In this case, I'm using No More Nails. Apply a good amount of construction adhesive, attach the pull wrap, and then what's really important is that there is a lot of firm and evenly distributed pressure all over the pull wrap to make sure that it forms a nice, tight, consistent bond with the drawer fronts all across the drawer. So I just used some weights that I had at home to apply that pressure and I let that sit overnight. For the body of the dresser, that was pretty simple. I just had to paint the body white to match the West Elm piece. So I gave the whole thing a scuff sand to make sure that my paint had something to adhere to. This plastic coating on this dresser was really slick, so scuff sanding it was super important. I then primed the entire dresser with my favorite thin shellac based primer, and because I was gonna be spraying this in white paint, priming it um, was super important as well so that I wouldn't have to um, use as many coats of paint. And of course, again, primer also helps my paint stick to the, to the piece. And then I sprayed it with three coats of House and Canvas's white paint in the color Angora. And since watching someone spray white paint on top of white primer is about as exciting as watching grass grow, I've limited the, um, the amount that I show in this video.
Whenever I'm adding texture to the front of my drawers, whether it's pull wrap or dowels or something else, I always cut them a little bit larger than the actual drawer front. Um, I just find that it's easier when I stick them on. I don't have to exactly line everything up and worry that everything is flush. I just can throw it on and then I sand it down all flush to the top and bottom of the drawer with my sander and I just find that so much easier and it gives me such a, a polished professional look. So I have the pull wrap on all of the drawers and I'm really liking how it looks. I love the subtle oak ring pattern on it. However, I think I want to lighten the color just a little so that it looks like it has a wash on it. Now, I could do a paint wash on this. However, sometimes paint wash looks a little bit blotchy and I can't really like sand and fix it. And so I decided to try something else and hopefully this will give me the look that I'm going for. So what I have here is just my regular top coat, the same everything diamond wood finish that I use on the rest of the dresser. And I've just added a little bit of the house and canvas paint in Angora, the same white paint that I put on the rest of the body. And that's going to tint the top coat just slightly. And so I think when I spray this on all of the drawers, not only am I gonna seal it in and you know cover it with top coat, but it's also going to give it um, a this light white hazy look over it. And I think it's gonna give me the look that I'm going for. So fingers crossed. I tried it on a small test piece and it was okay. So hopefully this turns out. I normally have no issues with adding contact paper to drawers, but the minute someone starts filming me, it turns into a hot mess. I don't know why, but after many attempts, I was able to actually line all of the drawers with contact paper. I bought new legs off of Amazon because the legs that came with this piece, I actually had used them <laughs> for another makeover that I had done. So this piece actually had no legs. Um, and so to attach these legs, I just pre-drilled pre holes and then screwed in the legs. It's pretty simple. Let's go over the numbers for this makeover before I show you the final reveal. I got the piece off Facebook Marketplace for $30. The legs cost me $25. Things like paint, primer, top coat, and that contact paper cost me another $25. The handles cost me about $15. And my biggest expense for this makeover was that pull wrap for uh, the front drawers and that cost me about $50 for the part that I actually used. So that makes my total cost for this makeover $145. Now, when I compare that to the cost of the dresser at West Elm, that cost over $2,300. That's a savings of well over $2,000. Now, I didn't end up keeping this piece. I did actually sell it, and I was able to sell it on Facebook Marketplace for $450. So that makes my total profit on this makeover about $305. I spent about six hours total working time, which makes my hourly rate for this makeover about $50 an hour. And now I'd love to show you final reveal for this makeover 
And before that, let's just take one more quick look at what this piece used to look like. What do you think? Comment down below and let me know if you think my piece came close to looking like the West Elm version or which one you like better. I'd also love to know if you will be trying this technique or trying to do your own version of a high-end furniture piece. I hope this video inspired you and maybe helped you realize that sometimes with just a little bit of imagination and the right materials, you too can create high-end looks for your home at just a fraction of the cost. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, do all the things. It really helps me get my video out there and to put out more content like this for all of you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next makeover.